Dobby's had a rough go of it lately. Lethargic, no energy, no desire, no drive. Easily distracted and drawn away from his paintbrushes, unable to even sit still and focus on painting a beautiful sculpted miniature. His passion has faded. Color and shape no longer give him inspiration. The beauty of nature no longer his muse. But then it dawned on him why miniature painting just isn't satisfying for him. He's a cat. <laughs> Hey again, friends. You know, one of the things that I really enjoy about miniature painting is the seemingly endless amount of information out there that will help us improve as miniature painters. And it's not just learning from other miniature painters. It's also learning from the centuries of work behind all those craftsmen, artisans, and traditional painters. Recently, two of my amazing miniature painter friends, Vince and Sam, were discussing something known as mother color. And the idea of painting with a mother color has been around for hundreds of years, utilized by traditional painters. And as Sam and Vince explained it to me, it seems pretty straightforward and simple. All you do is you take a selected color and you add a little bit of that color into every other paint you're using to paint your subject. And really, it makes sense, right? We're just ensuring that the piece has harmony through its color value through all surfaces. This way, everything feels like it's living in that same environment. And if you're anything like me, you stress over your paint schemes and determining what colors to use together and how it'll all work out. Now, I could certainly do a bunch of more research and learn all of the artsy-fartsy details about why this technique works, but that's not any fun. I'd rather just get enough information to make myself dangerous and get to the painting desk. I'll be painting this amazing 75 millimeter mini diorama of a necromancer raising some minions. And I do want this to have a dark, ominous feel to the whole piece. So my mother color will be rather dark, a mix of dark camo green and black. Because I don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here other than adding this color to every paint, I decided that I was just going to base coat the entire model with my mother color. This way I'm keeping it very simple and straightforward and I don't get frustrated while I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do and not do. I'll be using fairly thick paint for the majority of this paint job, keeping my focus on placing the paint in dramatic ways, almost like a sketch style. If I knew what that was. I'm not covering the entirety of the armor with this first coat of blue. Rather, I'm focusing on those upturned areas that would catch light and leaving everything else in that dark green shadow. By now, I bet all you mother colors are wondering what this awesome model is and where you can get one. I'm glad you asked. This model comes to us by White Werewolf Tavern, who just happens to be the sponsor of this week's video. Convenient. White Werewolf Tavern offers an amazing new set of beautifully designed 3D models each month for you to print at home. And they aren't just your run-of-the-mill generic models, either. Each month has a theme, and professional artists ensure that each sculpt is unique and has the right amount of detail. Oh, and they have also set the bar for reliability on their pre-supports without having the entire model covered in them, wasting all of your precious resin. You can check out their models on their Patreon page as well as their My Mini Factory page. And as a nice little bonus to all us mother colors, they are offering a 40% off coupon code for all purchases for the next two weeks. So check that out in the description below as well. Thank you, White Werewolf Tavern, for supporting the channel and making this sweet necromancer diorama. Back to the video. As I'm building up the highlights to keep the paint thick and opaque, I just add a little bit of white to brighten it up and sometimes even a little bit of black. If the color's looking too bright blue, I don't want that, so I'll just add a little black to balance it out and desaturate it. I try to remind myself that as I'm building up the highlights on these skeletons that they are not the focus of this model. The necromancer is. So what does that mean? That means that I don't put the highlights super bright here. I don't want to detract from her. Instead, I keep them subdued while still making them interesting. And this does work for painting a single model as well. Think about what are the one or two things you really want the audience to view on the model. And everything else 
keep it a little bit more subdued. I really like taking the focus and concern and stress over blending and throwing it out the window for a piece like this. I'm just trying to create dramatic brush strokes. And instead of just pining over getting perfect blends and stressing out, I get to look at the bottle from a 30,000 foot view and really see what's gonna create the most impact. Also, much of the time, I start blending way too early in my painting process, and those blends don't even end up being seen by the time I'm done with the model. As I work through the other smaller details of the model, I could really start to see the effect the mother color was having on the paint job. It really did make each color feel like it lived in the same environment, and it really wasn't difficult at all to pull this off. I just painted like normal. Painting the bones of the skeletons is a great example of how you can utilize pieces on the model to draw your eyes to where you want them to go. I want my audience to be drawn towards that necromancer. So I put more of the highlights in the areas closest to her. And all those other areas of bone really are only getting like one or two layers of paint. And they don't need any more than that. Because I'm not sure how this mother color thing is really supposed to work other than just putting that color in, I decided I was gonna go basic on the base, basic bases, and just use that mother color. I was gonna add a little bit more of the dark olive green to it as I built up some highlights and a little bit of white. Again, very restrained. I want you to see that there are details there on the base, but not spend too much time on them when you first view the model. Now on to the star of the show herself, our elven necromancer. For the first time on this model, I'm painting her skin and covering every inch exposed. I'm using that mother color, along with a desaturated flesh known as deep skin flesh by Citadel, and also a little bit of red beige, just to give a little hint of blood under that skin to make it feel alive. As I applied the base color and built up the highlights on her skin, I kept getting worried that I was going too bright. You know, and it's a silly minor thing, but it's something I always tend to forget. Wet paint looks different than dry paint. So the color was always brighter at the beginning than it was gonna end up being. So quick tip, just let the paint dry before you decide whether you like the color or not. I was worried that using thick layer paint highlights to have this soft female skin brightened up would look terrible and you'd see all the lines. But I reminded myself that I'd rather have an interesting piece with a lot of contrast and dynamic range going on than I would have perfect smooth blends. I'm gonna go back and try to make it look a little bit better later on, but for now, I'm just gonna roll with this and see how the final product looks out. Looks out. How it looks out the window, cast a window, necromancy. Like I said, I did do a little bit of basic blending on the skin with a very thin down glaze of our base skin tone. 
and this made it look a lot better and you could certainly continue this until it is smooth as your heart's content and maybe even add in some different variations of color to bring more interest to the skin. And even though I'm going for a desaturated scheme here, I think a place to add a little bit more color will be in the Necromancer herself, specifically for her dress. And I use this nice lilac color. And you'll see that immediately when I add that to the mother color, it just brings it right back in home with everything else on the model. And as I build up the highlights, I can push that lilac a little bit more and create some interest to the dress. And as I did highlight this dress, I don't think I was aggressive enough in adding more of the lilac as I created the highlights. I probably added too much white and not enough lilac. So there wasn't much of a punch as I'd like. So what I did was I created a very thin glaze with some nice purple ink and went over the whole dress to bring a little bit of vibrancy, but still controlling it so it doesn't stand out entirely from our whole environment. And since I like to combine being lazy and being a paint conservationalist, I just used that desaturated purple that was already on my palette to paint her hair. I had a plan of going over with a different tint later on to make the hair look different than the dress, but for now, we're just gonna get those basic highlights put in. And speaking of hair, it can be a tricky thing to paint, can it? It has this natural sheen, which makes it react to light quite differently. And without going into all the science involved in that, one basic thing that I do when painting hair is I picture that there's a little halo right above the head of the model. And I have that halo fall down and rest on the head. Wherever that halo would touch the head is where I highlight. And then a quick hit of Carabug Crimson all over the hair brings it back in tune with the purpley scheme we've got going on with our Necromancer while still feeling slightly different than the color of the dress. While I was debating how I was going to paint the final details on the Necromancer herself, I was looking at the piece as a whole, and I realized that the shadows in the deepest areas weren't as dark as I'd like them. So I took a thin down pure black paint and I just put that in the spots that I really wanted to be the darkest points of the model. Again, I'm not worrying about blending or anything. Because the black paint is thinned, it's not gonna be super stark black. Brack, brack, brack. And our final details are these Bojangles all the way around the Necromancer. She's got like a beaded little belt thingy and a giant necklacey thingy and some bracelets and big hoop earrings. And I want those to have a nice bright color to them. Not so much because I want them to detract from the Necromancer, but I want your eye to be drawn up to her face. Nice bright colors just where the light would hit these shiny little bits. As I was base rimming this model thinking I was done, I just realized I was, I was missing a little something. You know, we're dealing with a necromancer here, so we need some spookiness, right? We need some dark magic going on. And I do love me some green glowy skeletons, so we're going to go over a quick and simple way how to create a glow effect coming from an object. I take a very light gray and I just touch those points that would be brightest, that would be hitting the light, and even pure white from the areas where it looks like the glow is emanating from. With that down, I just put this green fluorescent paint into my airbrush and I just spray it over with a couple of thin coats and boom, we got dark, evil, glowy skeleton magic.
And when I finished this piece, my mind immediately started going towards how I was going to use this mother color technique in another paint job. And that's a great sign, isn't it? It was really simple to try out. It made me feel like the whole model had a unique and composed feel, and I've only really just scratched the surface. I can see using this to make an entire Warhammer army feel unified, or even bring to life any setting I want to envision my miniature to be living in. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe just a fraction of as much as I enjoyed making it. If you do like the channel and want to support it, you can consider buying a Ninjan shirt, or you can check out the Patreon and see all the cool rewards you get for joining me over there. Both of those have the links in the descriptions below. As well, go down to the comments and tell me about any kind of painting techniques or tips or tricks that you've gained from maybe something outside of the miniature painting world that you think others would like to learn from. Until next time, get out there, slay the gray, you mother colors. Pure white for the f the descriptions in the later white white werewolf white werewolf Bleh.